Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. So today I'm going to be showing y'all my top 10 underrated faves. So these are books that I never hear anyone talk about ever on booktube or like rarely and i feel like they deserve a lot more hype than they get and i want to just expose you guys to books that you might have never heard about so let's get into it so the first couple books that i have sitting here are actually by pretty popular authors like I hear them talked about a lot on booktube they're very successful well-known authors and they're some of my favorite authors but these are just two books by them that i never hear anyone talk about and they definitely should be talking about them oh my gosh we have a puppy parade coming in hello hello how are you doing thank you well, definitely should be talking about these books because in my opinion they are one of the best if not the best books by these authors so first up i have the lion game by ruth ware i know a lot of people talk about the death of mrs westaway or the turn of the key when they talk about ruth ware but this is one of my favorite if not my absolute favorite of the ruth ware books it's about three girls who went to boarding school or like a private school together, but they live there. So yeah, that's a boarding school. Yeah, okay, definition of a boarding school. They provide room and board. Come on, Haley, catch up. Okay, <laughs> so these three girls went to a boarding school and got into all kind of shit when they were teenagers. And then they all come back together for a reunion and the secrets are exposed and things go down and there's death and there's murder. And yeah, it's very, very good. It kept me enthralled the whole time. And I highly recommend this if you like Ruth Ware or if you just like thrillers at all and the other popular author i have and one of my very favorite thriller authors if you watch my channel you already know do i even need to say it lisa jewel i know a lot of people talk about her books um, watching you the family upstairs things like that but those actually are my least favorite of all of her books this might be my number one favorite. It is a twisted family drama called The House We Grew Up In. It follows a mother who is a hoarder and has a plethora of mental health problems and how her children are adjusting after her death. And um, everyone in this family has major problems and it's very interesting to read about them so yeah i feel like twisted family dynamics this is so good another pretty popular thriller author that i love is jennifer hillier she's not too popular on booktube i've heard people talk about her but she's not like you hear about her in every thriller video but I really like one of her early novels. This is The Butcher by Jennifer Hillier. And it was recently, um, I read it recently. I read it for The Reading Rush and it ended up being a five star book. And I would have never predicted that this would be five stars, but it is. It's about the grandson of the police chief who caught the infamous serial killer, The Butcher. And so he moves into his grandpa, the police chief's house when he's like going to live in a nursing home. And he starts discovering little pieces that have been left behind from his grandpa about the case and suspecting that maybe the person that grandpa put in jail was not the butcher it's very interesting there's also a ton of different subplots about like people who have been murdered by the butcher and like their descendants today and it's like it's so exciting it's wonderful i read it in less than a day and if you like slasher thrillers i highly recommend you pick this up okay my hair like has to do something like this is not allowed we're just gonna deal with it. This is what it is. Great. So next up, I wanna recommend two nonfiction true crime adjacent 
books that I never hear anyone talk about ever and are two of the best books that I've ever read in my whole life. So sorry if the angle changed, a rogue chihuahua just knocked over my filming setup, so <laughs> had to reset that up. But yes, on to my two nonfiction picks. The first one is The Last Victim by Jason Moss. This is about a boy in high school, and this is a true story, obviously it's nonfiction, um, but he starts writing letters to serial killers in jail, like Jeffrey Dahmer and John Wayne Gacy and Ted Bundy, and they start answering him. And he literally has pen pals that are serial killers and his twisted experience with getting to know these men who have some of the twisted, most twisted minds on earth. And it is very intriguing. I love this book. Next up, I have The Confessions of a Sociopath by M.E. Thomas, which I'm pretty sure this is a pseudonym because it is about the real life experiences of a sociopath. And this is not a dangerous, person like this is just a person who is diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder and it's really great to see people on the internet and in life just advocating for mental health obviously i'm going to school to become a therapist so that's really important to me and it's great to see that but i see a lot of support for kind of the nice um more common mental health disorders uh such as depression, anxiety, some of the more common conditions, but there are a few mental health disorders that people are just not willing to accept and still have a very, very stigmatized view um, to the general public. And I feel that sociopathy or uh, antisocial personality disorder is really one of those disorders. Um, but this book explains in a very digestible way the way that sociopaths, which I don't like using that kind of labeling language, but for the sake of this video and for common understanding, I will. Um, they are people and it's about their everyday experiences and how they differ from normal people and that maybe people you know or people that are in high power positions that you never would expect are actually suffering from this condition as well. So it's very interesting if you're into mental health at all, I highly recommend this. So next up I have my favorite YA book of all time. And you guys know I'm super, super picky about YA. And I think this was popular on booktube like a while ago, but I just feel like I need to mention it again so y'all don't forget and y'all don't sleep on my fave, which is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I've read other E. Lockhart books and I haven't liked them, but if you have tried her other books and you're not vibing with them, I would still suggest you picking this up. It is a wonderful, beautiful, mysterious tale of grief and I'm just gonna leave it at that. I don't wanna say too much, because I feel like it's better to go into this blind. It is wonderfully written, very uniquely written, which some people don't like, but I do. And yeah, I don't wanna to say too much. I just think everyone should read this book. Next up, I have a romance, How to Walk Away by Catherine Center. So this book has a special place in my heart. I absolutely love this romance and I don't hear anyone really talking about it that much, which is like how I love this book so much. It made me cry so many times. I also feel a special connection to it because it's set in Austin, Texas and I live in Austin, Texas. So it's very cool to read about things where I'm like, oh, that's right down the road. Um, but yeah, I love this book and it's about a woman who, I don't know if I want to give away what happens to her, but something happens to her that changes her entire life and she kind of has to rebuild and she doesn't know if she wants to keep her boyfriend there with her or maybe go for this other guy who's kind of helping her along with her recovery process and I love it. It's so cute. It's definitely like fantastical, like not a lot of these like 
grand gestures and things happen in real life, but hey, that's the magic of a romance for me. Next up, I have a very light, fluffy, chicklity kind of beach read, if you will, and that is When Life Gives You Lemons by Lauren Weisberger. I don't hear many people talk about this, but I really love it. It takes place in the Devil Wears Prada universe, and it's just following three of the kind of side characters, um, including Emily, who is an actual fave, played by Emily Blunt um, in the movie. I didn't enjoy the Devil Wears Prada book, but this kind of like spinoff, I absolutely loved. It's basically about three rich ladies going about their lives and drama happens and mysteries are abound. Like you're trying to figure out things the whole time and it's just very fluffy and fast paced. And yeah, if you like suburban drama and like rich people drama, you would love this. Next up, I have a little bit of an older book, but it's still one of my favorites and I don't hear many people reading it or talking about it at all. And that is The Luckiest Girl Alive by Jessica Knoll. I read this a super, super long time ago, so I feel like I need to reread it soon, but it's one of my favorite thrillers ever. It has everything. Cue my Stefan voice. This book has everything and everything that it has, has a trigger warning. <laughs> like, this is a very, very intense trigger warnings for violence, abuse, um, self-harm, um, sexual assault, school shootings, like every possible triggering subject is in this book, but it's basically about this woman who goes back to her hometown to take part in kind of like a documentary um, about the tragedy that happened at her school. Like, I think this is the 10 year anniversary or something. And yeah, it's about her experience with that and how going back there like brings up all of these memories and she feels guilt and grief and unlocks the key to mysteries that she didn't know what was happening in high school, but now she's figuring it all out and everything's clicking into place. And it is a wild ride. My last underrated favorite recommendation is The Little Paris Bookshop by Nina George. I absolutely love this book. So it's basically about this old man who lives on a boat on the coast of France and it's a bookshop and he lives in this floating bookshop and it's just his place and he gets a little apprentice at the bookshop and they go on a journey together and it's beautiful and very touching and sweet and this is another one that I read a long time ago that I really want to reread because it's just adorable and I never hear anyone talk about it. It gives me Man Called Ove vibes like so hard so if you like that you will definitely like this. Okay guys, that is all of my underrated favorite for you guys to check out. I hope you discovered a new favorite book today. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video and spending some time with me today. I hope you really enjoyed it. And if you did, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.